What's going on fellow mages, I'm One and Mosley, a game where it's real palsy, and I play most of my games one-handed. So I'll be taking a look at a game that's kind of hit the BR craze called Spellbreak. I'll take a look at the game's settings and features, as well as showing off the kind of the gauntlets that I think are the most accessible, while also providing feedback at the very end. If this is your first time here, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it if you join the community and help spread the importance of accessibility in gaming. I also stream on Twitch at twitch.tv backslash one hand mostly at 1 p.m. CST on most weekends. Hope to see you there. We're gonna look at the gameplay settings first. For keyboard and mouse, you do have toggle for crouch. And then you have some various mouse sensitivity settings here. You also have those same ones under the controller setting. Something I think is really cool is if you want and you have trouble with vision and low vision and different things like that, you have HUD scaling from 100 to 200, I believe. Yep, 200. But then you can also break it down even further in advanced settings. And you can change the HUD. Scroll down, there we go. Change the HUD size of various different things. Compass, player and squad information, the crosshair, your health, your mana, the loadout, minimap, and everything in between. So I think that's a really cool idea. Not only can you scale the HUD, by itself, but you can also break it down and do different parts. Then we also have your standard keybinds where you have one input per each keybind and you can change these to whatever you to desire. And then controller, they also have different presets for controller and they do change the icons based on whatever controller that you do set up. At the time of recording this video, I wasn't able to get the auto run to work, but when I did, when you use the auto run and you cast a spell, you stop moving and your auto run cancels. Now I wish that it would continue and you do not have to hit the input again. That's one feedback I have. The other feedback I have is to make the levitating a toggle. So you don't have to hold the input to jump up in the air constantly. You can just like toggle it on, you go up and then toggle it back down and stop using it. All right, so I'm here in the practice round and I have the toxic and the stone gauntlet. I kind of wanted to give you a breakdown of what the top accessible gauntlets that I think are to kind of start out with and try and mix and match and see what you kind of like as well. Toxic gives you a good wide AOE and it slows people down. Then for your primary spell, you have to hold the input and then release. So it can be kind of hard to do that. Same thing with stone, you throw a big boulder. Then you also do a shootout of shockwave. The shockwave you cannot and only do on the ground. You can't do it while you're flying or in the air. You like slam down or whatever. I think fire is also very accessible as well. Fire, you shoot fireballs. And then you can mix and match. So I do this and then that. And then also the fire one is a firewall, which you have to press and hold as well. So I think that one is another one that's pretty accessible. You also have legendary frost, which is kind of like the sniper class of the game. The longer you hold, it zooms in slows down time a little bit as you're flying and it will, you can shoot an arrow, but you can mix and match. You can freeze this cloud. And then the extra spell, I can do like a frost wave around me. I already have the toxic one. Here's lightning. Lightning is kind of like a rail gun in like quake. I can just hold the button down and shoot lightning in an area, or not in an area, but around the crosshair, whatever I'm targeting. And then the other ability is like an area effect. If anybody walks in to that area, they'll get struck by lightning. Well, it blew that up. That was pretty cool. Then the last but not least, the wind one. You shoot out little wind things as you hold it down, similar to the lightning. Then the other skill, let's throw this out there. The other skill is the tornado. And that'll do it for my breakdown of all the different types of gauntlets. I kind of favor the stone and the toxic early on to start, but feel free to mix and match whatever gauntlet feels best for you in your play style. There's plenty of different combos that you can choose between all the gauntlets and they interact between you and your teammates, depending upon the squad size that you're playing. So just enjoy the game. Well, that'll do it for my hands-on look at the accessibility in Spellbreak. My feedback would be to add toggles for levitating and jumping and make it a lot easier instead of having to hold two inputs at the same time. Also, when toggle for auto run is on, make sure to allow spells to be cast 
and allow the auto run to continue to go. That way I don't have to hit that input again at a second time. Also since Spellbreak is a multiplayer game, it does not have text-to-speech or speech-to-text for its chats. It does need to have it under the CVIA and hopefully we'll have it soon under development. If you have any more feedback on how to further improve accessibility in Spellbreak, make sure to leave a comment below. I really want to hear it and I'm sure the devs do too. So until next time, keep leveling up. Thank you.